I'm very happy to introduce uh, Tamara. Uh, she will give us a seminar. I won't, I won't take too much time. I'll just, uh, you can read the title and uh, enjoy. It will be a very interesting talk, I'm, I'm sure. So go ahead, please, Tamara, the floor is yours. OK, so thank you very much to, to talk tonight in this very friendly environment. So I'm going about to talk about correlation function for unitary invariant ensemble. And this is a joint work with Giulio Ruzza and Massimo Gisoni, who are the main, the main leaders of all the calculations that, that took place for this course. So let me, let me talk about the plan. So I want to, to say something about the emission. So the setting, can you hear me well, or shall I put on the microphones? No, no, we hear, we hear you well. You can hear me, yes, but if I move around, maybe then I mean, so I'm going to talk about thermition, uh, matrix and swan matrix ensemble, and uh, I'm going to focus on the classical invariant ensemble, which are the Gaussian, the Laguerre, and the Jacobi unitary ensemble. And uh, the first part of the talk, I want to explain effective way to calculate multipoint correlators uh, and their relation to discrete orthogonal polynomial. And in the second part, uh, I want to explain the relation of these uh, multipoint co correlators to enumerative geometry. So what uh, what this multipoint correlator counts uh, and regarding the Gaussian unitary ensemble, we all know that they count the ribbon graph. For, for the Laguerre unitary ensemble, we have monotone double Ulrich numbers. And then I want to say something about Hodge integral. And uh, for the Jacobi unitary ensemble, we have triple Ulrich number. OK, so this is, as I said, it's a joint work with uh, Gisoni, Massimo Gisoni, and Giulio Ruzza in these two papers. So just to have a quick uh, flavor of what I'm going to talk about. So let me let, let me put on uh, on uh, on uh, on a table. So we have these three matrix models. So this class come from the three classical orthogonal polynomials. So the Hermite, the Lagarde, and the Jacobi, and the correlators. And this is what I'm going to talk about. So the correlators are indeed expressed in terms of discrete classical discrete orthogonal polynomials, which are Meissner, Poles, Hahn, and Wilson. And what is the combinatorial meaning of these correlators? Well, we know for GUE, this is a ribbon graph, and this was the works so, so since the seminal works of Bresen, Etzfinso, and Zuber, and then many others follow, but I'm just putting them. And then regarding LUE, we have uh, the combinatorics of this, uh, this matrix model are double monotone weighted to which number for LUE. And this is also a result obtained by, um, by Kud and Dahlquist and O'Connell. And while for G Jacobi unitary ensemble, we have triple monotones weighted for which number. Then there is also some geometric interpretation. So in the point of view of algebraic geometry, so these, these, uh, these, these objects are generating function of some OG integral for the particular case of the weight uh, of the Laguerre unitary ensemble when alpha is equal minus one half. Okay, so this is the plan of the talk. And uh, so let me, let me start with, uh, with, with, the, model, with the models. So as I told you, we have these three Gaussian ensemble, and these are the three measures with Z is the normalizing factors. And so these are emission matrices, which, uh, which, uh, uh, with, uh, where the M is the R measure, and uh, we put on this, uh, on this ensemble H and this probability measure D mu N, which are these three one, the Gaussian, the Laguerre, and the Jacobi. And here the, the Gaussian lives on R on the all on the all real line. So the eigenvalues are on the all real line. The Laguerre, we have uh, only the positive, and the Jacobi we have the interval zero one. Okay, so now the generating function of correlator. So let me so let me define C1. So it's the one point correlator. So it's the generating function for one point correlator and is the average of the trace with respect to the measure. So the measure and calculating the set HN of I. 
And then we have multipoint correlators, so which are defined in a similar way. So CL of Z1, ZL, so is the product of this trace still integrating with respect to the same edge. So this is, is what I'm going to so the object of my, of my first part of the talk. Okay, so now you can expand uh, these, uh, these, uh, uh, so th this, uh, of course, uh, I mean, so since uh, M uh, has a real eigenvalue, which lies uh, according on the whole real line on R plus on zero one, of course, uh, this, uh, this object can be singular. So it's a well-defined uh, analytic function, except uh, where, uh, I mean, we eat an eigenvalue. So basically of the real line of the real, of the real of the real interval zero one of, of R plus. But however, we can expand this function at zero or at infinity. And when I'm, I'm doing this expansion, I have in mind the Laguerre or the Jacobi. In one case, it is an asymptotic expansion or it can be a Taylor expansion. So we can expand both this function at zero at infinity. And the same, it can be done. And so if you expand, you get the formal generating function for one for, for the values trace to n to the k or the negative value trace to n to the minus k minus one. You get both of these. And we can do the same for the uh, for the multipoint correlator. So here I'm introducing the multipoint connected correlator. And again we can expand at zero or at infinity. And uh, we have these correlators, uh, which uh, are the, the product of trace m to the k j for j from 1 to l, and this coefficient in the denominator parameterize which, uh, which, which, which powers we have. And the same, so this is the expansion at infinity. And if we expand 0, you have the trace of minus uh, m to the k. OK, so this is the second. So what I want to calculate is this object. Uh, just to, to, so I introduce your connected correlators. Uh, and uh, so connected correlators are defined in the following. So C1 connected uh, is equal to itself, but C2 is the correlator minus it. So, so it's basically a correlation function. So C2 of Z1, Z, Z1, Z2 minus C1 of Z1 times C1 of Z2 and so on. Another way to, to introduce this correlator is to introduce a, a partition functions and n of t with this respect to the probability measure that I was originally considered. So Laguerre, Jacobi, or, or the Hermitian. And then you introduce some times here, tk from k from minus s to s, and you, you leave this s going to infinity, OK? So what we get uh, is that this uh, multipoint correlator, so this trace mkj, from j from 1 to l connected. So now it's simply the derivative of the partition function evaluated at tk1, tkl, so at this time that I've introduced. So the k here and the k here has to be the same, and then we evaluate at time t equals 0. And so this is the way to, to get the multipoint correlators. And what we want is to calculate this object. OK, so uh, the idea to calculate is to pass through orthogonal polynomials. So and let me explain the idea how to calculate. So we know that this, uh, in general, Hermitian matrix uh, are strictly related. So to uh, th this model, this Hermitian matrix model are strictly related to orthogonal polynomials. And in particular, the partition. So if we introduce uh, the polynomial, so to the, to the measure d mu n, we associate uh, a measure d mu z. Uh, so this is, is defined on h r, h n of i, the matrix on which I are eigenvalues on the interval i. And then we associate in a natural way a measure d mu z. And the orthogonal polynomial, where well, these are the norming constants, so these are harmonic, and so the, the, the partition function will be the product of the first n minus one norming constant. But let me keep going. So to this Pn, we have a matrix Yn. And this is, is a so-called Foucault's Iskitaes matrix. So this is built from the n and n minus one orthogonal polynomial, and it's Cauchy transform. And the property of this matrix is built in such a way that the determinant is equal to one. Okay, so this is probably all known facts for you. And now I'm introducing a matrix R, 
where this R is the product uh, between yn, this matrix yn to the minus one, and in the middle I have one, zero, zero, zero. So this matrix R, which in the language, uh, so it's called matrix resolvance, uh, satisfy the following properties. So the determinant is clearly equal to zero. The trace uh, is uh, equal to one because of cyclicity property of the trace. And it's a kind of projector because R square is equal to R, okay? So these three properties, so you have to keep in mind. And then uh, what we can write uh, is that the connected cumulants, so this generating function C1, C2, and CL, and so on. Well, the first one is, is simply given by the trace of y n to the minus one y prime. This is derivative with respect to x to z times sigma three. While the so C2 has this product of trace minus one divided at one minus at two, and the, the 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 L one. So when we have L components, this is, is this symmetric quantity, where this uh, the sum of index is I one I L is uh, is uh, belongs to the to the set of L cycle of the symmetric group S N. So just a, a comment, uh, I want to, to, to comment that uh, these expressions are, are exact. Uh, and uh, so they are not singular. So I want to say they are not singular on the diagonal because when Z1 is equal to Z2, we have that R square is equal to R and the trace is equal to one. So numerator is going to zero, denominator is going to zero, but since uh, this is a symmetric function of Z1, Z2, so it will be regular, okay? It doesn't have pull on the diagonal and the same here. So this, this kind of, of, uh, of expression for the cumulants uh, are, so uh, have appeared, uh, I mean, uh, in a paper uh, of in our cumulary book. So this is a, actually is a, is a, is a, um, is a lecture from school. It's a lecture school in random matrices. And then uh, they appear in the paper of Bertola Dubrovi and Young about, uh, um, KDV and then Dubrovin and Yang on, uh, on uh, for total lattice. So, and uh, so they are strictly related to logarithmic derivative of tau function. So where R, so the R, so the formula is the same, but uh, for different model, they are as different expression. But the, the, the functional form uh, looks the same. So looks the same for other models. So the only difference is that the R so the formula looks quite universal. What's changed is uh, the ex specific expression of the R that depends on the model. And so this is basically express, what I want to say is press logarithmic derivative of the function of integrable system, we can say. Okay, so this is, is the first uh, result. Uh, and the second result uh, now is the calculation. So I want to calculate now this object. So I want to calculate explicitly. So how to calculate? So uh, I, we have uh, we have uh, we have orthogonal polynomials. So we are studying Laguerre and Jacobi, and so this is will be Laguerre and Jacobi polynomial. And so what you have to do, all you have to do is basically put uh, your Laguerre polynomial with Jacobi here and try to do expansion. So this uh, this expansion, but if you do like that, you don't get much of a structure. What's happening? So you can do because this is our explicit polynomial. So you don't get much of the structure that is hidden in the calculation of these multipoint correlators. And uh, the reason why we, we so we, we started this road because I mean this uh, the, the, so the idea was uh, was to calculate, but we didn't get much. And the idea is that uh, so you, you need to get a structure, and it's easier to get a structure from differential equation. So the first observation is, uh, okay, let's check first what is the differential equation satisfied by R. And this is okay, this is the standard literature. So we first, uh, so this Y of N satisfy a Riemannian problem and uh, to, to get it uh, to a constant jump, we just uh, shift uh, the weights. So we assume that the weight is of this exponential form, which is, is the case for Jacobi and Laguerre. We can always put it like that. And so from Y, we define Psi, and this Psi satisfy an ODE, 
where u, an ODE in z, where u is a, a rational function in z and trace of u is equal to zero. Okay, so this is uh, everything in standard literature. And now from the differential equation for psi, one can get a differential equation for r. So r satisfies this differential equation. So it's a first order differential equation for r. Okay, so now that I get the differential equation, and uh, so let me, so now I have this differential equation. Oh, the observation, so is a linear first order differential equation. And um, so for the class of the, the observation uh, is uh, that uh, for the classical orthogonal polynomials, each entry decouples uh, and satisfy a third order ODE. So it's a first order in each entry, but if we want to decouple it, and we can, it satisfy a third order of D. And this is because we have the classical Jacobi Hamilton Aguirre weights. Okay, so this is the first observation. So we can decouple each entry as a, its own independent ODE. And this, uh, the next observation is uh, that since uh, what we are interested in is the asymptotic expansion at infinity or at zero, it doesn't matter, we want to expand at zero at infinity. So we plug this ODE, this, this expansion into this third order ODE. And what happens is that the coefficients satisfy a three terms recurrence relation. Okay, so this is the idea. And this three terms recurrence relation is exactly the three terms recurrence relation with discrete hypergeometric orthogonal polynomials. Okay, so for GUE, this is his Meissner Polacek, I don't know. For LUE, is the AN and DUA or DUA polynomials. And for G, for the Jacobi unitary ensemble, we have the Wilson polynomials. Okay, so this is, uh, is uh, the result. So for GUE, this was already derived by Dugovin and uh, Young. And uh, for, uh, well, for LUE and GUE, was derived by myself with Giulio Ruzza. Massimo Gisoni. Uh, and this is, was done for multi multi point correlators. The one point correlators were already obtained by Kuhn, Mezzadio, Conan, and Sim using, using a different derivation. And in our language, the one point correlator corresponds to the one one entry of the matrix Rn1. Rn. So this is where obtained for all the classical uh, orthogonal ensemble. Okay, so now once, uh, once you have this, uh, this structure, for example, let me do an example for the Laguerre, how it looks like. So for the Laguerre ensemble, we have a parameter alpha, which uh, is, the real part has to be positive. And so the expansion at zero, at infinity at zero, as this, uh, this, this form here, where all the entries, so we have two coefficients, AL and BL, which are given here. And uh, so this is the Pocamer symbol and to the end is the Pocamer symbol and this is QL. So this QL are the Han polynomials. And the only difference between this AL and BL is that here we have one and here we have zero. The rest is the same. So you can see you have a lot of structure that uh, to identify it uh, was, uh, I mean, of course you, you, you can derive uh, these, uh, this relation uh, without uh, passing through this procedure, but you don't identify the structure that there is there. And this is uh, indeed was what happened with uh, the result of Dubrovin and Young. They, they derive uh, this expression for the GUE, but they didn't see that this is where discrete orthogonal polynomial. The observation was done by Kudren and Menzadri and O'Connor and Sim. So they didn't identify with discrete or total, because these are only a coefficient. So if you don't look for the structure, you don't find it. But it is a very nice uh, algebraic structure. Okay, so this is, uh, is basically the first part of the talk. And so let me now, for example, do some example of how you can use it. So for, for correlator, so here we are still in Laguerre. So the, the, the trace of x to the k uh, correspond to this uh, k. So this a k is basically this, uh, 
this, uh, discrete orthogonal polynomial, and, this, and there is a, some reciprocity law which uh, connects uh, the trace of x to the k and x minus k minus one by this relation. So the coefficient here is the same, and we have just to divide by alpha minus k of the pocamer to k minus one. And uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, relation uh, persists uh, when we consider also two points. So for example, trace uh, x to the k, trace x, uh, we have this relation. So we have uh, this, uh, again, this uh, orthogonal polynomial alpha k. And uh, there is a relation, so you can put a minus one here or a minus one here. So, but uh, there is, a, you, you see, there is a kind of reciprocity law between all these coefficients that is uh, given here. And you can go on and, uh, and check things. Okay, so, so this is uh, as far as the calculation of the coefficient, uh, and this is conclude uh, the first uh, part of my talk. Uh, let me now say something about what uh, this, uh, this coefficient counts. Uh, so uh, let me first recall something very uh, old, uh, and this is uh, uh, regarding the GUE. So when we calculate the trace of this GUE, we have uh, uh, even potential, so e to the minus trace of m squared, and we want to calculate uh, the uh, trace to the mk where now, so this trace to the mk is the sum of this product where the sum is taken to nk combination of indices from i1, ik. And we want to evaluate the average. So this is, uh, was done uh, by in this seminal paper by Brazil, Itzkins and Zuber in the 80s, and they use big formula and phi and diagram technique to calculate the non-zero contribution of all this integral. And they showed that this is in one-to-one -one correspondence with the combinatories of, map, of maps. And in this case, the maps we are talking about is a graph draw on a surface. And so their result, so let me show some calculations. So we have trace n to the four is equal to n. So we have this calculation, so it's easy to get. So this I took from the paper of Dugovin and Young. So you have several calculator here. And in general, so what is the result? So you take this tra trace and you have several indices. So I1, IK, and this is equal. So this is can be recouped out in the sum of this number here, which I'm saying, I mean, what it tells times a coefficient, which is n n times power to the two minus two g minus k plus i over two, where i is the cardinality of this set, and uh, g runs from zero to this number here. And so let me explain what is this number. So this number is the number of connected oriented label ribbon graph of genus g with k vertices, which is this k here, and vertices i1, i k. Okay, so let's apply this, uh, this rule to the trace m to the fourth. And uh, so in this case, uh, the, the result is written here. And uh, so we have two n cubed plus n, and this should be equal, I'm using the formula, so it should be equal to some over g of a g. Uh, so g, there is nothing much to count here because there is only genus g equals zero and one since this power has to be positive. And uh, so you can see now g equals zero, we have two, and g equal one, we have a one here. So it means uh, that we have uh, two graph. So this number two is two graph with uh, one vertice of, of valency four and genus zero. So and in this case, uh, we have these two graph and, and this is has to be interpreted in the following way. So if you give a number one, two, three, four to this, uh, to this, uh, to this vertex, so we have couple one with two and three with four. And so you have one graph where you can couple one with four and two with three, and you have this one, and you can couple one with three and two with four, and you have this one. So this is a, a graph that are of genus zero because the can is kind in a bone, while this is lives on a tori. So it cannot be put in a bone. And so this is the, the interpretation of the 
GUE. So let's uh, look at LUE. So LUE is, uh, is starting in 19 and well, first actually in a work um, in 16 by Kuhn and Menzade, Vigo and Singh. That they observe that, uh, so they calculate uh, with their formula the first few coefficient of the trace uh, of uh, the Laguerre unit unitary, unitary ensemble, and they observe they were all integers. So they, they, they then they conjecture that they were all integer, and uh, uh, and then they show that one point correlators were all integers. So the question is. Uh, Okay, are all the multipoint correlator integer? And the, the answer is yes, and they are integer because they are counting double monotone full width numbers. And so this is uh, was proved by this paper in 2020. So we also, so we entered the game when I, so I, I entered this problem, we entered the problem when I saw this paper, I became interested in this problem and uh, so we start to work on this, uh, and uh, we also observe uh, so that uh, for the particular case alpha equal one alpha, so the partition function of the Laguerre uh, ensemble with the times, uh, so with the times uh, coincide uh, for the generating function of all integrals that were studied by Dubrovin and Young in the same years. So this was a paper in, in 2018. So they, 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 they produce uh, this partition, so they, they produce uh, some partition function for all the integrals, uh, and uh, it was not clear what object it is, but is indeed the Laguerre partition function. So the, 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 the partition function of the Laguerre unitary ensemble. And uh, okay, so basically now combining point two with point three, so there is a kind of, so this is our Ulwitz number, this is our OG integral, so you can have a kind of what is called ELSV formula between Ulwitz number and OG integrals. Okay, so this is the result. So let me let me explain. Maybe I don't need to, to step uh, very slow on what is a, a, a Urwitz number. It's just given the audience. So, but uh, maybe I can go very fast. So we have a, a permutation group D and uh, a, a partition to partition mu and mu uh, of, uh, of the integer D. And the double Uwitz number is simply the number of, uh, n to, of I don't know, m two plus uh, alpha tau one tau, tau r and beta such that uh, so alpha and beta are permutation of cycle type mu and nu and tau one tau r are transposition such that uh, the product of alpha with tau one tau r is equal to beta. And then uh, uh, how many transposition I have? Well, this R is equal to the length of uh, uh, mu, the length of nu plus two G minus two, where G is the genus that is appearing here. And uh, so, yeah, since we want a connected, uh, connected uh, surface, so the subgroup generated by this uh, alpha, alpha tau one tau r acts uh, transitively on SD. And the third condition is uh, the third, fourth condition, uh, so is that uh, if uh, the transposition is uh, tau j is uh, denoted by alpha j bj with alpha j less than bj and uh, then we have a monotone strictly monotone with this number when b1 is less than b2 strictly less than br and while we have a weakly monotone with this number when we have b1 less or equal than b2 less or equal than br so this is uh, is what are these all these numbers? So I'm I'm indicating with the symbol plus uh, positive or bigger and bigger or equal to indicate strictly monotone or weakly monotone. Okay, so this is the object and uh, probably the example in this audience I can skip and uh, let me tell the result. So this is due to Kuhn and Dahlquist and O'Connell. So you, you need to do a rescaling and the rescaling is in the alpha of the Laguerre unit and ensemble. And you, the alpha has to go infinity like n. 
And so we introduce a constant C, and this is, is my new parameter. So alpha is rescaling in this way. We have a partition then mu of, uh, uh, of length L and size mu. And uh, this is, uh, we introduce the strictly monotone Urwitz number, and this is weighted. So the, the is weighted in the following way. So we are summing up uh, over all strictly monotone with this number of type of size, uh, the, the size of mu and length s. So basically this s here is the sum over all partition of length l. So this is, uh, is I will call uh, uh, strictly monotone weighted with its numbers. So this is the number here. And uh, so for the Laguerre unitary ensemble, what uh, Kuhn and Dahlquist and O'Connell show using comp comp only combinatorial, combinatorial calculation is that this trace of mu1, mu l, so you have the partition mu, so this is, is the partition here, is equal to the sum for g bigger or equal than zero, one n to the two g, and then you have this uh, monotone weighted with its number. So, you distinguish them, so you have to identify the power of C to the S to distinguish the different S. And they have a similar formula when you put uh, negative powers here. So if this mu becomes minus mu1, minus mu l, all negative powers, these, uh, the formula is similar to this one. And instead of having a, a bigger symbol, you have bigger or equal symbol. Okay, so this is, is the result uh, and just uh, a comment here. Okay, so uh, maybe I, I'm not uh, very, uh, so uh, I'm not sure I put the whole literature about Hurwitz uh, numbers, but uh, as far as I know, if you want uh, the, 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 the weekly monotone double Urwitz number, the pure one, not without any weight. Uh, so we need to go to uh, a little bit richer matrix integral, which is the Arichandra in 16 zone Zuber integral. Okay, so matrix model that calculate the pure monotone, weekly monotone Urwitz number is uh, the Arichandra in 16 zone Zuber. Well, for the Laguerre, we, what we can get is the weighted uh, weekly or, or strongly monotone Hurwitz numbers. Okay, so let me do an example. Um, so, for, for, so, so for, for what you can calculate, uh, and so, so, so something can be easy. So with the Laguerre, if you calculate uh, trace x to the cube x uh, square, so this is, is the simple polynomial. So you can see is a polynomial of degree one, two, three, five in n. Now you substitute alpha equals n times c minus one. And uh, you, you take, uh, you, you, you check your numbers uh, and you get uh, the stri strictly monotone Urwitz number and all you get uh, that is different from zero is only this table here. So basically here we have a partition three, two, so mu is three, two, and then we have the case when the length of mu is equal to one, two, three, and four, and you don't have anything else. And by the way, there is a symmetry that can be proved between, uh, yes, the case. Uh, so there is always a symmetry between the first and the, there is a complete symmetry in this, uh, in this, uh, in this table. While uh, when you consider the uh, weekly monotone, so we consider negative correlator. So, so now we have uh, this expression and there is a denominator. So there is a polynomial here, but there is a denominator where this for camera, when you put alpha times n and you want, uh, and then you expand for large n, you have an infinite series, okay? You will have an infinite series in n. And so you, you have uh, that uh, the, the, the weekly monotone with its number will be different from zero for any genus because here you will have an infinite series in N because you have to expand this alpha, you substitute an N, you have an N in denominator and you have as many numbers as you want. So in this case, the complexity, and you can see here from the numbers straight away. So the complexity of this case is, is much, much higher than the complexity of this case. You can see straight away in genus one, no? Genus one, genus one, S4, you have zero. Genus one, S4, you have 4,800. So 
is completely the complexity of the two cases are much, uh, much different. So let me just uh, go quickly on this uh, identification with uh, OG integrals. So, so these OG integrals were introduced by Go, Go, Gopakumar, Marinho, and Waffa. And uh, basically, they are given here. So you, you have uh, your modular space uh, of Riemann surface compactify MGN with n bar point. This is uh, a dimension 3G minus 3 plus n. So, and uh, you can put, uh, you can consider, so the integral, so you have this dimension here. So if you want to integrate on this space here, to have a non-zero number, you have to put a form, a number of forms which have the same dimension as the space. And so which form are considered? Okay, so this is uh, our, uh, okay, so the first, the, so for each line bundle LJ on the, on, on the modular space, you have the first chain class, uh, which uh, I call the Psi J. And um, so this J parameterize the endpoint uh, that are made pick here, so you have n of this object. Then you have the kappa class, which are the pull back, uh, no, push forward of this uh, of this uh, pi, which is the forget movie map uh, of, uh, of uh, between MGN plus one and MGN. And then, okay, you have these lambda classes where these are char polynomials, so push bundle. But I mean, let, uh, let, uh, let, uh, I, I don't want to, to spend too much time on this object, uh, but uh, I mean, so this, uh, these, uh, these people here cook up, cook uh, this, um, this integral, so this integral, and uh, you can put the integral into a generating function. Okay, so so this uh, so this is H G mu. So for each partition mu, so this mu is a partition. So lambda is a parameter, and G is the genus. So this mu here is the mu that appears here. So the mu here are the same, and uh, this lambda here are the, so this lambda are polynomial where the coefficient are chain uh, point. So it's chain classes. Okay. So once you, so the non-zero terms of this object uh, give a numbers uh, and uh, that are cooked up in this HG mu. So there was a lot of paper on this business uh, that if you uh, now start to put some times here and cook everything into the generating function, these were identified with, uh, with, um, with uh, Volterra lattice with several integrable hierarchies. So what we did with Julia Massimo is to identify the generating function of uh, HG mu lambda with uh, exactly the partition function of the Laguerre unitary ensemble for the weight alpha equal minus one alpha. And there is also a map for the time. So you need to do some maps between times, but the result, uh, so it's, it's a very non, so the, the, the maps are the, 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 there is a map of time, the map of uh, N. So it's, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm not going to specify it, but the result is that once you, you, you identify the object uh, of uh, the paper of Dugov and Young with uh, the, 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 the generating function, so the, the, the monotone, strictly monotone, weighted to this number on one side and the other, so you have an identification. And so and this is the relation. So on this side, you have these numbers here, on this side, you have Urbis number. And so when you compare between epsilon and lambda, the same powers, you get uh, what is called the uh, ELCV type formula. So on one side, you have this object here and you compare with this object here. Okay, so this is uh, what uh, was obtained. Okay, so now let me explain a little bit about uh, Jacobi. So for Jacobi, we have, uh, so the Jacobi weight, so this is a classical orthogonal polynomial where alpha and beta are positive. And for Jacobi, what came out are triple Hurwitz number. So in this case, uh, the definition is a generalization of the case before. So instead of having two partition, we have three partition of D. And uh, so HG lambda mu nu is the 
number of time to pass, which now indicate with pi one, pi two, tau one, tau, tau one, tau r of permutation as d such that, okay, r is always the same. So as two g minus two, the genus minus d, the, the, the dimension of the partition and the, the outlines. Then uh, we want pi one of cyclic type mu, pi two of cyclic, cyclic type nu and tau are permutation, or oh, sorry, are transposition. And uh, so since we want uh, weakly monotone, so when ai is less than bi, we want b1 less or equal than b2 less or equal than b3. And then the condition is that the product of pi1, pi2, tau1, tau r is uh, the as uh, cyclic cyclic structure of lambda. Okay, so this is, is the number, uh, is the definition of type or monism with its number. And uh, so, okay, the example maybe I can skip. And uh, so the result for the Laguerre, for the Jacobian ensemble is again, so we need to rescale, and this is important. So we have to rescale the coefficient alpha and beta in the weight with n, okay? And then we take any partition lambda of, uh, so lambda one, lambda n, and we calculate the correlator. So trace to the n to the lambda j in this form. And that this is equal to, okay, this factor, which uh, is not important, but what is important is that uh, this expansion is an expansion in n and this coefficient, c alpha and c beta. And the integer here are exactly this uh, uh, triple weakly monotone Urwitz number. Also in this case, uh, will be a weighted Urwitz number because uh, here, so the, you, you cannot distinguish partition which have the same length. So this will be a coefficient, so partition which, which have the same length as indistinguishable. So here are to sum to all the all the numbers which have the same length. When you calculate with the negative correlator, so trace n to the minus lambda j1 well, for the Laguerre ensemble, they were different. The object in this case, they are exactly the same. So we have the same, the same object. So triple of its number. The only thing that change are the coefficients. Okay, so this is the result. Uh, and let me now give a sketch of the proof. And uh, so uh, for a sketch of the proof, uh, we introduced uh, the sure basis. Uh, and uh, first time I, I'm defining some times u or set of which I call times u and the sure basis in introducing the following way. So I'm defining h of k of u, this polynomial, which are obtained from the expansion of this exponential. And the sure function as for a partition lambda, the sure function as, as lambda of u is basically the determinant of uh, this quantity. So h of lambda i minus psi plus j of u and uh, is a determinant of size, the length of the partition lambda. Okay, so now I'm introducing, uh, I'm considering the Jacobi and uh, I'm introducing uh, uh, the case positive or negative uh, trace, uh, and uh, I'm introducing this generating function. So we can fix on the only positive times. And so this list uh, is, uh, is well known to be a tau function of the total lattice, okay? So I'm not specifying how much I can go into sum. This is, will be formal relation because then I'm expand. And uh, the first result uh, is that uh, and is well known in the theory of integrable system is that this, uh, this uh, partition function can be expanded in sure basis uh, and the formula is very compact. Uh, so we have the dimension of the partition. So it's the sum of uh, over partition lambda of P which have a length less than N where N is the dimension of the, of the matrix integral of the dimension of lambda divided by the, the, the size of lambda factorial times this coefficient and times the sure function S of lambda of U. Okay, and uh, so using the, so the, the remarkable fact is that using Selber integrals, this quantity can be calculated exactly and is essential in our case that we are taking the Jacobi polynomials normalized between zero and one. 
If you want to try to do the same between minus one and one, you don't have Selber integrals available. So it's, it's a subtle but important, uh, important uh, fact. And uh, now comes, uh, so comes all the work of John Arnott into the game because uh, I mean, we, the idea to, to, to show that these are generating function of Hufitz number is to, we know, okay, so this is his total lattice. John was working with the, this hypergeometric type function that were satisfied Toda. So, and then we are generating function or Hufitz number. So our strategy to prove this result for Yakomi was to, identify the partition function that we get here with the partition function that uh, John produced in his paper. That was the strategy. So I have this expression here, and then I'm digging in the series of paper of John, uh, Guy Paquet and Horlov and uh, compare. So this is, is the strategy of the proof. And uh, okay, so it was a hard job, I have to admit. <laughs> Uh, so, but I mean, so this is uh, what uh, we have done. So for, uh, so John uh, in a series of paper, which I'm probably the, the, the ones I'm referring to are with, with Guy Paquette and then all of introduced for a, for given a function which does not need to be rational, but I mean, for a function G, uh, he introduced uh, multi-parametric uh, weighted Urvis number, which he denoted by H of G of uh, genus D and uh, lambda partition lambda. So this lambda is a partition. And then he, he, he cook all these, uh, this number into a generating function by introducing some times uh, and a parameter epsilon. And then we are summing over all partition lambda. So this lambda here is the same as here and it's the same as the index of the time here. And then uh, we put a small parameter epsilon to the D where the D is usually the genus is the same D here and here. Okay, and this is the object that was uh, studied by John and was proved to be tau function of Toda, two dimensional Toda also of KP. And on the other side, uh, we have this uh, expression that also was proven in John papers. Uh, and uh, so now, so this expression here is the same as this expression here, where now we have the shoe function. And this uh, G function here that uh, described the, 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 the multi-parametric subfix number is explicit uh, and uh, appears in this form. Okay, so when you look at this expression and you look at our expression, you know, it looks almost like cousin. So, so in, uh, I want to say that this, uh, so this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this multi-parametric uh, weighted to this number is very general because for each uh, G that you can choose and you can choose the G in many, many, so I call rational because the case I was interested in are rational are, are concerning Laguerre and Jacobi, but you can choose G in many, many ways, put also a, a parameter that gives quantum of its number. So, but for each choice of G, you can get a class of all its numbers. And uh, so and the, there are explicit computation, we are recursively, we have topological recursion or, or explicit expression of this, of this number using integrable system and random matrices. So this is, but uh, what I want to say, what was useful for us uh, was exactly this formula here, okay? So let me go to the identification maybe. So this is what we get for, for example, for Jacobi with positive time. And this is uh, uh, what uh, the formula of uh, uh, John, Gay Paquette and Orwell are getting. So you see, we have the S here, the dimension here. And so we have this C and this G. So we need to identify. So the identification goes as follows. So epsilon is one over N. G is this rational function where the parameters here are C alpha and C beta, which are the scale variable of the Jacobi and the time again are rescaling this way. So we have a time here and a time here and a hard scale. Okay, so once uh, you have the function, uh, you know what you can calculate with, uh, with uh, John formulation. So with this function, this uh, Given this, uh, this rational function, what you are calculating is triple with numbers. 
Okay, so, and that's it. So, so this is the, is the result. So we know that these are of this number and these are triple of this number. And so the identification gives the result. Okay, so let me do an example, uh, which is, uh, uh, okay, so interesting. So this is this trace, uh, this is Jacobi trace X to the cube, and this is uh, just a polynomial. So you can calculate, uh, it's easy to calculate. And now you have to substitute alpha equal to C alpha minus one times N, beta equals beta minus one times N, and you have them in the denominator. So it means that when you expand for N going to infinity, you have an infinite series in one over N. So it means that all the coefficient of type of this number will be non zero. But uh, so, in uh, so for, for uh, so for uh, I'm just uh, considering the case G equal G genus zero. So this first coefficient give the genus zero. So this is trace X to the cube. So the partition here associated is one, one, one. And then we have mu and nu three. So the first coefficient here, so it's the alpha to the one. So it, uh, it means that we are choosing a partition of uh, the numerator of nu of length one. And so this is our the coefficient while we're regarding the length of the partition mu is one, two, and three. And so these are the coefficients. So two, six, and four. Then the second coefficient is a partition of length two, and so it's two, one. And then in the in the row you have the partition of length again, one, two, three, and then a partition of length three, and then you have again one, two, three. So for this par particular case, this is uh, are uh, are not weighted or with number because the partition of length uh, two or of three is only this one. So this is uh, exactly they are not weighted or with numbers. But uh, so just to, to show that the, 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 the formalism is very powerful to calculate things. Uh, okay, so I think I'm done. And uh, so let me, so I'm putting back uh, the slides at the beginning. And uh, so what I've done, uh, first of all, I, I'll show you how to calculate correlator for the classical unitary invariant ensemble in terms of uh, classical discrete orthogonal polynomials. And then uh, for the Jacobi ensemble, I showed that this polynomial are triple monotone with its number. And for the Laguerre, we showed that they are related to OG integrals. So there are many open problems here. So that uh, are nice to, 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 to investigate. One is, for example, to extend the technique to, to obtain multi-point correlator. So in the same style that we were obtained here for classical discrete uh, ensemble, like Charlie and Meichner. So, and then uh, of course also apply the same, uh, the same technique possibly be beyond the unitary invariant ensemble, like try to attack the orthogonal ensemble. And then uh, another problem that, I mean, uh, this is, I really don't have an idea how to do is, uh, I mean, to, to when you calculate this Urvis number, I mean, this technique of course gives number, but if you want to calculate uh, the expansion for large G and mu, it's, uh, so you don't know what to do. So, <coughs> So this is another, uh, so it's, it's in this case, you have, uh, so you need some, some, some ideas so how to calculate this number for large, uh, so the asymptotic of a g mu nu for large g. So this is another open problem. Okay, so I think I'm done. And thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, Open the floor for questions, please. Thanks. Well, I might have a little question. Please. So, uh, Tamara, uh, I guess there's one point of connection that I don't quite understand. You were uh, writing a generating function for triple monotone, I guess, uh, or triple Hurwitz numbers, also maybe pure triple Hurwitz numbers. Whereas what we did uh, was always double. And uh, we had, of course, a, tau, uh, a two total tau function that 
if expressed in the sure function basis, it was clear that it was a hypergenetic tau function. If it, uh, if it was expressed in a, uh, a monomial sum power sum, um, uh, sorry, uh, power sum basis, uh, it was uh, clearly the generating function for the Hurvisant. But do you have a formula uh, which expresses the generating function either as a triple sure function expansion or as a triple power sum expansion? And if you do, what are the, what is, is that in any way a tau function? Yes, this is a tau function of Toda. Standard. So the, the, the Jacobi ensemble is a tau function of the one dimensional total lattice. But, but total has only two sets of flow parameters, but somehow the generating coefficients involve a triplet of partitions, the lambda mu nu. So I don't understand because usually uh, there's a correspondence between these two total uh, flow parameters when expressed either in the sure function basis or in the uh, power sum symmetric function basis, the correlation between that and the number of, uh, well, the number of uh, partitions, lambda mu nu that there is. You have three partitions, but Toda has only two sets of flow parameters. So that's what I don't understand. But in this case, I only have one flow of parameter. I have only T. It's one dimensional for me. It's not even two dimensional. Uh -huh. It's even one dimensional. I even only want one flow. So you're using a, this is still a, a what a KP tau, a hypergeometric tau function as a generating function. Yeah, it's a, it's much less. It's one dimensional tau. It's much less. Yeah. yeah okay. So really KP, uh, but uh, but so I, I guess I don't know where you <laughs> where you you coax out the three coefficients lambda mu nu. Are they not coefficients? By, by choosing this g. By choosing this g. And, but the G, I saw the G that you used. It looked quite familiar. In fact, we in, in one of our papers with uh, with Runoff, uh, we we actually looked at that particular case. But it was just a standard. Uh, I mean, we were not calculating triple Hurwitz numbers or anything. It was either single or double. And yeah, okay, no. you you have a quadratic polynomial in the numerator and a linear polynomial in the denominator. That that is actually a case which we which we studied, but we had no clue how to connect that with triple few or its numbers. I mean, if, if, if I mean, we, we use your 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 formulas. It's not <laughs> we use yeah, your dimension. I mean, it's uh, it's it's exactly this is will be triple. Yeah. Okay, so. Is there somewhere behind, I mean, behind our formulas are these uh, expansions, either in the basis of sure functions or in the basis of uh, power sum symmetric functions. And, and well, we read off the uh, coefficients <coughs> for the way the Schwarzschild numbers as the coefficients of the, <coughs> of the single or pair, not triple. But, but, but you're doing it somehow different. That they are all weighted because let's look, uh, sorry, I want to stress that they are weighted. Uh, so let me go to the to the formula. So you don't distinguish. So you, L new, so here is the length of the partition new. So yeah. when I have the expansion, so this, you don't distinguish this length and you don't distinguish the, the one. Uh, so the only thing that is fixed is the lambda. So you don't distinguish even the mu because I mean, you can only distinguish the powers of this coefficient. Right. Well, I guess that's the, that, that's the formula that I'd like to understand better. You have an expansion. Uh, you have an expansion which the coefficients are hg lambda mu nu, lambda mu nu, uh, but the expansion is in powers of these uh, what Jacobi parameters, c alpha and c beta. Is the alpha is a, you need to rescale the coefficient of the weight. So the yeah. weight has also to go to infinity with n, and you rescale. Right. But in this formula, of course, there are no uh, kp flow parameters at all. So how does one connect this with the generating function, which is a tau function? No, no, the, 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 so, sorry, le, no, the tau function, sorry, maybe let, let me go at the beginning. So where I was defining the tau function, the tau function, so the tau function, it's here, no? So yeah. you start with a tau <laughs> function, you introduce this time, and for me, just these are the time of Toda. 
Yeah. And then uh, well. <coughs> The, the, so now you, I made derivative with respect to t evaluated at t equals zero. And these are the trace uh, that I'm calculating, no? So this is how the Right, object. right. So you pass from the, uh, from the partition function, you pass to this sort of uh, multi-point correlator by yeah, taking yeah. derivatives. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's that right. I understand. Okay, so the times disappear because what you're really evaluating is, uh, is this multi-point correlator. It's the coefficient in front of the time. It's a different way. So to get rid of the time, you make derivative. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I understand. That uh, yeah. is, is a, yes, and it's right. the same here. So when, when I'm going to this, uh, so to this uh, relation, uh, so, so, so when I'm going to this relation, yes, I, I can take derivative to get rid of time. And what remains is the object I want to calculate. Okay, of course, the second formula, I understand it's familiar and the first looks similar, but I guess I, uh, could you just say it in words again, what the coefficient C plus lambda N alpha beta means? The, okay, in this case, uh, you can calculate exactly in this case, uh, and is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is obtained uh, via Selberg integral, this case. But, but combinatorially, what is it telling you? No, so in its so I'm identified this object with this object, and once I put everything together, so everything together, I'm identified. So let me let me again. So the goal was to so let me again. I'm calculating, for example, trace to the x to the cube, and I have some numbers. Then I'm rescaling alpha equals c alpha minus one, beta equals c alpha, and I do the expansion. I'm interested in this number here that are all integers. So these are the number I was looking at. So anyway, the bottom line is that you've calculated, okay, this is one example, but you've calculated not weighted, but pure uh, Hurwitz number, triple pure Hurwitz numbers, you, but you, you somehow have... used the weighting which we uh, introduced to do it on the way you somehow use the weight generating then the, the weight generating function uh, but you end up ah i think i understand you end up with a pure Hurwitz number because is it that everything is monotone except for the uh, everything is, is a site uh, two cycle except for these so everything is simple except for these and therefore there's only is it true that there's only one uh, 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 one uh, um, choice of partitions uh, for each value of the uh, uh, of the genus and of K. No, no, no. There in is other... not. They, they are not pure. They are not pure triple. They, in this specific case, they are pure, but they are not pure triple. They are weighted because you cannot distinguish. Uh, so for the, this particular case, uh, yeah. they are pure. But in general, they are not because they are not. Uh, so in this case, uh, of course, uh, we have a, 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 a partition of length three. And so when you look at a partition of uh, length two of three, there is only two one, there is nothing more. But if it was four, uh, you have two one and three one, two two and three one, and you cannot distinguish. So if I was having a partition of length four, if I was having one, 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 I cannot distinguish betwe between two two and three one. Yes. My formula would not be able to distinguish. So you sum, you sum over them. I would sum, I would sum over them. Yes, it would be a sum over them. So why in this case is it pure? In this case it's pure because I mean, the, it's three because the lambda that I'm choosing is three. So the partition ah. new is two one and there is only that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this case it's pure, but it's only because of the choice of the partition. Okay, okay. No, no, the general okay. formula does not distinguish. I mean, it's weighted, I want to stress. It's weighted like, so you see here, this is the general expansion. Now you have to look at it. So I have a coefficient in the denominator. I have a coefficient in the numerator. The only thing I can do is to check uh, the integers that are attached to this expansion. But uh, so I cannot distinguish between partition with the same length, uh, L of mu, in the, as regarding mu and the same in the denominator. I cannot distinguish. Right. Mm -hmm between partition with the same lens L of mu. So I'm summing over all of them. So this number here is the sum over all of them. So yes, here, right. for particular cases, uh, there are, they are pure, but uh, probably the highest one, I mean, so it depends. Uh, 
So the, the longest one, if you choose the longest one, it's uh, <laughs> it's always pure, no? Because I mean, the yeah, 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 yeah. That's me. So, but but the waiting is the monotone or the weekly monotone waiting? Uh, no, this it's is weekly you... monotone. Weekly monotone. Sure. Weekly monotone. Okay. Weekly monotone. Yes. Okay. Okay, I have to sort this out because the weekly monotone waiting is usually just one over one minus z, whereas you have a quadratic polynomial with the numerator and a linear one with the denominator. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, for the, 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 the weight that you are telling came out for the Laguerre. Ah, the one over one minus z. Yes, if I don't, if I'm not, uh, because at the end uh, we ah. try to compare, but that was Laguerre. For, uh, for the Jacobi, we have one parameter more, and we are sure it was a triple. I mean, because we have an extra parameter. I so uh, I don't know. You probably noticed, but in the paper with uh, Rudolf, uh, with uh, Runoff and uh, and uh, Marco, we had an integral representation for the case of quadratic uh, weight generating function with quadratic polynomials and numerator. I mean, what you're calling a problem. Well, that I don't know. The paper we use uh, to tell the truth uh, for us, uh, I mean, we, we spent some time to understand which was the, you, you write too many papers, John, it was hard to understand. <laughs> but for us, the paper we use was uh, this one, Arnaud Guy Paquet, 2000, uh, uh, Journal of Mathematical Physics, and then the one with Orlov, Arnaud Orlov Communication. We use these two papers. Yes, yes, yes. This is the paper. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, I think hidden in that, I don't know if we, uh, in the paper with Orlov, we had somewhere a matrix representation, a matrix model representation for the, what later uh, Marco called the Cauchy uh, matrix and so on. But it was different from the Itzik and Zubair uh, one, and it was different from the monotone one. Um, and that recurred in the, uh, in the paper with Boris Runoff, when we were explicitly calculating the uh, the uh, non-weight, I mean the 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 pure Horvitz numbers for uh, gosh, I can't even remember what I it see. was. But... but so indeed, the only case that now in the classical ensemble that has not been done is the Cauchy, is the Cauchy matrix, is the Cauchy case, and that I mean, you want to say you already done the Cauchy case? No, no, I, I, all that we did. Before Marco uh, came up with his Cauchy uh, one, was that we gave another tau function that is uh, similar to the Itzik and Zubair uh, Harish Chandra one, but which did not involve exponential coupling, but a coupling which which consisted of of products of determinants of uh, powers, and and that is what uh, Marco reinterpreted as a Cauchy. So he wanted to know whether there were, there were other tau functions. Yeah, because yes. Yeah. I see. So there is a recent paper uh, by Asiotis and someone else. So he put here, so I have to put actually here the, another list here. So this is the Cauchy uh, unit ensemble. I don't remember which uh, discrete polynomial are here. He calculate only one point correlators. And uh, regarding this box here for the Cauchy ensemble, I don't know what they are, but you, you are saying that the Marco was doing it or has been doing it. Well, I just want to say that there is a, uh, a matrix representation of two total tau function, which is analogous to uh, Isaac Sinzuber and which gives the Cauchy model. And that was already in a, uh, a cited, I mean, it was calculated as an example of a generalization of Isaac Sinzuber. Had nothing to do with Hurwitz numbers or whatever. Uh, it was just a, an example of a, a matrix representation of a tau function of a similar sort. So maybe I'll, I'll step in here just to see if, uh, if anyone else has a quick question. And then after we can just uh, wrap it up and, uh, and uh, of course, uh, discussion after is welcome. So if you're, anyone else? So if there is no more questions, then I'll uh, I'll uh, end the seminar here. And uh, thank you very much again tomorrow. This was a great uh, great talk. Thank you.
Thank you, Tamara. It was wonderful.